horses we're gonna go and put the axles in knuckles spindles and work to build these brakes so I can finally get this thing mounted so let's get started all right way before I painted these knuckles I ground down a section because I knew I wanted disc brakes so what I'm gonna do now is test fit this backing plate with the caliper on this knuckle and the spindle to see if that was enough material to come off of it. Um, this is my left knuckle, it has left written on it, and for reference when you're doing this, you want the steering components of the knuckle to be forward. So if I am facing the front, if I'm sitting in the driver's seat, the left side is going to be the left knuckle as if I'm in the driver's seat, not if I was facing it. So what I'm going to do, get this fit up with the right caliper and see if my interference, if there's any interference. Alright, I got both of my knuckles assembled with the calipers on them to check for interference. And the directions call for, I believe, an eighth, uh, as seen as in this picture, uh, it says... Make sure you can look over top of them and see down through here. Initially I thought I had that, but um, turns out I don't. So you can't see the whole way through there. Um, you can see I made a mark here, and there's one that's further along on this side. I'm gonna have, That's kind of like my boundary so I can get this back end of the caliper where my finger is down in here to clear this pretty easily. And the same thing occurred on this other knuckle. You can kind of see my lines right here so I'm gonna get these all disassembled grind off that material touch them up with some paint and then get these back together yeah that's right girl you grind that metal get it girl all right we did at least three test fits but the way we ground our knuckle here it's flat across halfway into this bolt and our interference was down in here some so we had to grind that out now we have that clearance that we were looking for threw some paint on it real quick and we're ready to put this in my ball joints are already pressed in um, the sleeve that goes into the top of the axle itself was taken out and I put a new one in so it'll go 70 foot-pounds down here the sleeve is then 40 foot-pounds, and then this top one's 100 foot-pounds of torque. So I'm going to get this in here, and then do the other side, and go from there. Okay, so we ran into some issues getting this bad boy on here. My axle had to come out. I got the knuckle on itself to torque spec. It moves just fine. Um, the issue being though, these are new 4340 axles and they're pretty beefy. The inner axle fits through the knuckle just fine, but the outer stub shaft was giving me a whole world of hurt. So. I had to go and just grind down this outside in order to get it through. Um, I had to actually get a new U-joint as well. I pressed that in today. I messed the other one up pretty badly. So, uh, yeah, don't do that. And uh, if 
if you need to, yeah, just take a little bit off. I painted it back up. It looks just fine. So we'll get this through here and then move on to our spindle. Cut. Okay, we got the inner axle fit. The outer, what I am going to do for the outer stub shaft, I have a dust shield that's going to go on it from uh, Yukon. Uh, this fits up on the stub shaft itself. And then from there, let me get my spindle and we'll put that on. Cut. All right, the, this is the older or later style for the whole complete kit. So I had to take out the seal that was inside this spindle. Additionally, you replace the brass spacer that comes from the original spindle with this nylon or plastic or nylon spacer and you take the beveled side and you put that towards the uh, base of the stub shaft. So there's my spacer. That goes on. And then I need the rubber style seal. So my rubber style seal is here. I'll place that on. And then spindle gets installed. And then now I'll take my backing plate and put the grade eight bolts that are supplied with the lock washers through here and get the mud shield installed. All right, the mud dust shield is on with those six Grade 8 bolts and lock washers. I torqued them down to 40 foot pounds each in a star pattern. Now I need to go and build the hub. And for this kit, the hub is literally the inner and outer wheel bearings and the spindle nuts. So um, I'm going to pack those bearings and then I'll show you that once I get that squared away. Alright, Carol Lee is packing the inner wheel bearings. I'm going to get the rotor out so that I can put or get the seal ready and put this bearing in. All right, the wheel bearing's in. Now I'm gonna take my seal and drive this in. All right, the seal is in. Carol Lee is working on the outer bearing now. And we're gonna get this rotor installed on the spindle next. All right, as I'm holding the rotor on here, both the wheel bearings are installed and greased. The inner, obviously, back here is pressed in by the seal, and then this front one's gonna be held in by the spindle nuts. So I'm gonna get these spindle nuts put on here. The method I'm gonna use, the first spindle nut will go on hand tight, tighten that down while rotating the whole assembly, torque it to 50 foot-pounds to get the bearings to seat. And then I'm gonna back it off, I will then tighten it to 30 foot-pounds. Once it's tight to 30 foot-pounds, I'll turn this, and then I'll loosen it a quarter turn. From there, you get the lock washer, which has the little holes for the stub to go on. You put that on there, and then you take the outer and tighten it to 50 foot-pounds. So let me do that, and then I'll show you the free movement after it's all finished. Okay, the first spindle nut's in there and torqued to 50 foot-pounds. You can see it's a little hard to turn this. I mean, not too difficult, but it's not as smooth. So the next step is, as I was saying, there's one of these that has a small nipple on it that will fit up with this. So I'm going to back this off to 30 foot-pounds, tighten it, loosen it a quarter turn, so then I put this on. Let me do that next. That's just to get the bearing to see. Yeah, it's sort of sort of to free it up, and then it gets me a 
enough room to put this on right because the spindle has a it has this keyway in it. in the spindle met up perfectly with one of those dowel holes and that dowel goes through it. So now I take this spindle nut, tighten this on to 50 foot pounds and then I'll show you the final product of how this whole hub spins. caliper is now on so the only thing that I got to do now put the rim on and put the locking hub in here so I'm gonna get the wheel on so that I can start getting this whole thing squared away with the suspension so stay tuned um, front disc brakes are pretty self-explanatory but if you got any questions email me projectbrakehorse at gmail.com all right <laughs> 